Hello and welcome to another walkthrough for Django for Everybody. In this walkthrough we are going to play with uh, crispy forms. Um, crispy forms are a good example of how Django just has something and you plug it in and things just get better and it doesn't take much work on your part. So the simple thing is, is let's take a look at the bor a boring form. This is the kind of form we've been doing in our CRUD and it's a, I'm using a form to do it and and all I have to say is uh, let's just make that a crispy form and now things are pretty they got all these colors they got the highlight there's a bunch of CSS forms are actually the markup of forms is actually surprisingly complex if we take a look at the markup in this crispy form it's got some CSS in there and it's just there's a lot to it so if we look we got all these classes and fancy stuff and and so crispy takes care of that for us and the key I'll show you in a second the key difference is just not that big of a deal so let me walk through the code so here is my crispy URLs so what we're going to do is um, use the same view and just switch between um, two templates one called boring and one called awesome crispy is uh, Urban Dictionary for awesome or cool or whatever. I'm not sure it's a, I'm not sure how cool of a word cool it is, but it doesn't matter. This is a riff on some of the forms code. This is a real basic form. I'm not, I don't have any models in this one. And so I'm just using forms and putting them on the screen. Um, and so I just got a simple form with a string mileage and purchase date. Um, and I got validator so I can make some mistake. And this is just a view, just similar to other things we've done in forms. Um, I'm making a class that extends view, and I've got to set this template name to none because really what I want to do is I want to pick the template name here in urls.py. Something about how Django works, you've got to put this in so that then you can override it here. I, and I like putting templates in here and success URLs in here when I possibly can. It just seems like the routing is going on here in urls.py and so I, I like doing that. So you'll note there's only one view but we're doing two things and that's because we're just taking self template name and doing the exact same thing. And so the boring form, it basically is loading some old data, making a form, pulling in the initial data for that, and then passing it into the template, and then rendering the template. Uh, the post, uh, if I submit the post, this, this would be saving the data. You, you read the post data, check to see if the form is valid. If it's not, send an error message. And then if we'll see the, a flash message, I'll show you that in a bit. And then we just redirect to a reverse. So. Um, Let's just see, for example, what happens if we violate a, a rule. We get this, please enter two or more characters. And that's something we've been doing before, and that's just kind of the get post of, a, of an edit form. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the template that creates this, right? Um, we're going to do base bootstrap, put a title in, override a welcome. So if you take a look at uh, base bootstrap, I don't have a, I should add a link here, to show you base bootstrap. CD dot dot, VI home, templates, base bootstrap. So base bootstrap has a number of different blocks that we can override. The title block, the head block, which is some material to put before the slash head. Um, a navigation bar if we want it, a welcome message, and then we'll talk about uh, these little flash messages in a second, like alert messages and then the content, and then some footer, maybe we want to put some JavaScript in at the bottom of a page. And so we've got these hot spots in Bootstrap, um, base Bootstrap HTML. So we're going to extend it. We're going to set the title. I'm going to put an H1, um, which is like a welcome. It's the beginning of the body, and then, there, then there's going to be some messages that come in here in a second. And then here's our normal block. So we got a form. We have to put the CSRF token in. That just puts out that input hidden tag so that we uh, avoid cross-site uh, request forgery, CSRF. 
and we're going to use form as table. Form is the context variable as table basically renders it as a series of table rows and then slash table. So if we do an inspect element here, and let's do just do blue page source because I'm too, my screen's too small so that you can see it on a sweet little mobile. So it's got the table and then it's using TRs and THs and slash THs and just kind of putting it out. Not a lot of CSS. It's using the table for so that these things can be lined up. That's what it tried to do. It's it has some aesthetic and away it goes. Okay. And so the form as table, like if you make a mistake, this ends up do blue page source, close that one. You see that this is just another somewhere here. Where's the error message? Yeah. It's just another table row, and it uses the table, and the table helps it do all this alignment. But it's not very pretty, okay? And so then we have the table, we have our submit buttons, and our cancel buttons, and we end our form. And so we've been doing this now for a while, just making boring forms. So let's start by, so if I go to awesome, so I go to cancel here, and I go to the awesome form, then... I am going to render right, crispy, awesome HTML instead. And so let's go there. So it looks almost the same. So here's boring, and here is awesome. So most of it is identical. It's extending base bootstrap. It's setting up a title. It's putting up a welcome chunk. But then we have this. So this is. You know, when, you, when you're using a curly brace percent load crispy form tags, that's like running code, basically. Like the URL, this curly brace URL, crispy main.py, that's running code. It's calling the, it's like the reverse. It's calling reverse to, to compute a URL given a string as a parameter. So this is sort of like making sure crispy is loaded for this page. If you do not do that, then this curly brace, curly brace, form vertical bar crispy will not work. Then the rest of this form is identical, except we just don't tell the form to render itself as a table. We use vertical bar crispy here, form vertical bar crispy, and this is called a filter. And we'll see another filter in an upcoming video where we'll make actually one of these filters ourselves. So we're taking the form object and piping it through a bit of code from the crispy library. And so that renders, it's not in a table, that renders all of the HTML per title, purchase date, and all that stuff. And it has all the CSS and makes it all gorgeous, right? So that's what it does. So form crispy does all that, and that's the main difference. Other than loading crispy form tags, that's the key thing. Everything else is the same. We had a table, form as table and slash table, and then we load crispy form tags and then we just, we just pipe form vertical bar crispy and everything else is the same. And then we get this beautiful crispy form. And, and it makes things consistent. So you just use crispy forms. I'm not saying you can't build your own form system, but for me as a software developer, I like starting out with something that looks half pretty and then away it goes. So that's crispy forms. That's how you use crispy forms. But let me show you a little bit more about how that works. Let me close a couple of my windows. Um, so one of the things that happens is you've got to load in your settings.py, you've got to add crispy forms to your installed app. So that's that's when you're, you know, so if you, you, if you do like um, Python 3 manage py check, you've been doing this a lot, it loads up all these things. And so it's checking and loading and loading and it's reading through the settings.py, it's loading all of these things. Like this humanize is a thing that, that we'll, we'll talk about that later. Django extensions, we'll talk about that later. All these things we'll talk about later, but crispy forms is a bit, a code library that you're at that point pulling in. So if you don't put that in, then crispy forms is going to blow up. It's gonna blow up right here because it can't load the crispy form tags okay so that's the first thing but then you have to install this and you probably don't rec recall 
Um, in the very beginning, I had you check out. Oh, let me go to that. DJ. Well, I got it right here. DJFree.com. Uh, lessons. Uh, installing Django and Python anywhere. So if I look at the assignment specification you did a very long time ago, you make a virtual environment, you go into your virtual environment, and then I told you to go grab DJ Free samples. This is in the very beginning of the class. And I told you to pip install minus r requirements.txt. And requirements.txt is a file that looks like this. And what it does is pip, pip reads this file and downloads a bunch of extensions. Django Crispy Forms, Django Filter, Django REST Framework. And so literally now for weeks you have had these all, it's installing it into your virtual environment. And that's why sometimes if you run Python check and you're not in your virtual environment, it'll blow up. But then I say, oh, well, go into your virtual environment and it starts working, right? I need to run server because I'm running this locally. Okay, so because you installed these things into, you installed the requirements into your Django 3 uh, virtual environment. And so that's why when it reads the settings.py and sees crispy forms in the installed apps, then it's like, ah, oh, crap. You know, I, I, I don't have it, but that's because you're running the loading of this file in, in not in your virtual environment that has all that stuff installed. And if you're doing this outside the class, you will want to make a virtual environment and then do the pip install for requirements.txt. So, so that's two prerequisites. At edit settings.py, make sure you have crispy forms in your, your in your requirements, and then pip install from the requirements. And then it's pretty simple. You just load the crispy form tags, and then pipe the form object in a template through the crispy filter, and then you will get gorgeous forms without hardly even trying. And you just keep using it. So that's our summary of uh, crispy forms. I uh, hope you find it useful. Uh, we'll pretty much use crispy forms from this point forward in the course. Cheers.